G'day and welcome to the next episode of Tech Adapt Crafts. I'd uh, like to display some beautiful elven scenery from printablescenery.com. The guys over there in New Zealand make some exquisite uh, STL files for 3D printing. These ones here are part of their Gloomwood Tree collection and the larger elven collection that was part of their Dwarves, Elves and Demons Kickstarter last year, I, last year or the year before I think actually. Uh, these trees provided me with some really interesting challenges which I have thoroughly enjoyed uh, tackling. I could not find any videos on how to actually make foliage like this. I wanted to try something a little bit different. So this has been a very big learning curve. This is a test. Uh, most of it worked. Not everything did. I uh, tried a number of different ways of actually attaching the foliage and how to actually stiffen it. This one is a fail. This was using PVA glue and a squirter bottle and it just didn't have the right feel for me. But I'll explain how these ones were done uh, in the video. So unfortunately this is a, a long video. I do apologize about the length but there are a huge number of techniques uh, that that I cover in this and the, the video on how to create the foliage I thought was very important to try and include as much as I could of that because this was a very big learning curve as to what worked and what didn't. I also updated the camera that I was using um, for, the <laughs> for this video and unfortunately didn't check my settings so some of the frames didn't quite fit the screen. You'll, you'll see. It, apologies. Enjoy the video. Hopefully you learn something and uh, have some fun watching these videos. They are always a lot of fun for me to make and it is really good to tick some boxes and get the terrain finished. I don't know how you guys are with building terrain at home, but I have so many 90 percenters out there. So many projects that get all almost finished and then you put it on the table ready for the game and never finally tick that box. At least doing these videos, I am, I am ticking boxes and I'm really, really happy about that. Don't forget, hit like, hit subscribe and leave a comment at the end and tell me what you thought about my own take on how to do foliage. This is all new, so I'd love to hear what you think about it. Enjoy the show. So our model has been sprayed black with an undercoat black spray from Army Painter. We are now going to paint it with Tormund's Endure Interior Walls Matte Paint Star and a Sea. This goes over the entire model. Next we have Tormund's Endure Interior Walls Matte Paint Seasoned Acorn. This will be a dry brush over the entire model. Dry brushing is where you are wiping off most of the paint before you use it and just hitting the raised areas. Rule of thumb that I use with dry brushing is if I can paint my finger and still see my fingerprint, then there's enough paint on the brush. Next we have another dry brush, this is with grey, using Simple Craft Paints, a black and white, a mix of big pot to keep it there for multiple miniatures, all using the same colour grey. And again this is going over the entire model. point we've finished painting the wood. Now we're going to go and use that grey changing brushes from a large uh, large dry brush 
down to a Citadel base brush. We are going to paint all of the stones in underneath the tree with that gray. Starting on the mushrooms, we are starting with the underneath part of the mushroom, but painting the entire mushroom with Liquitex Acrylic Color Basics Bright Aqua Green. This will go over the entire mushroom to help lighten the tops for when we put the other colors on later. Second mushroom color, this is J Burroughs Acrylic Paint Moss Green. So far all of the paints have been available through Bunnings, which is a, like a Home Depot store here in Australia. And it has a really great range of various different paints that um, you can readily access. This color we are using, Moss Green, we are doing over the tops of the mushrooms. It is a fairly um, translucent color, so it it did need that lighter color underneath or else it was just going to disappear uh, and I wasn't using a blending color between the light and that moss green for these mushrooms due to that transparency. Next is Crafty Color Violet. This one I am mixing with the moss green. Uh, to do a blend color between moss green and then the violet later. So this is a blend layer over all of the top of every mushroom. Following that, we go back to the straightforward violet and put that again in the center of all of those mushrooms, blending upwards. The final step in that process is to then have a blend between the violet and plain white right in the center of all of the mushrooms. little fungal blooms, these little mushroom pimples. I am painting them with Citadel Layer Emperor's Children, a lovely pink color. But there are so many of those little fungal blooms. <music>
So there we go, the painting is pretty much all done. We now come to the wash. I'll provide a link above. This is a mix, a brown wash mix that is based straight from Black Magic Craft. Jeremy has a detailed video there on how to make a black and a brown wash. This goes over the entire model, everything. It will help to blend in the colors. Once the wash is dry, go back over those fungal blooms with a mix of the Emperor's Children pink and that white to uh, have a little dry brush, just make them pop. Now a step that I only applied to the Elven walkway that I painted. This is Tormund's Endure Interior Walls Matte Paint Timber Beam. I mixed this with the grey that I've been using to do a dry brush over all of the wooden planks of that upper walkway. Gave it a much more cut wood feel and differentiated that wood colour with the rest of the tree. That layer was done post wash. The next part of this process is doing the foliage. Now, this was something that I started to prepare before the painting. You can see here I've got water, I've got Jacquard Alcohol Ink Pinata Color Lime Green, Liquitex Professional Acrylic Ink Transparent Burnt Umber, a um, bag full of Crafter's Choice Hobby Fill. This is Teddy Bear Stuffing. And this is what you actually use to create the foliage. I had no idea what sort of what sort of formula I was going to need to create this. So this was very much a trial and error. I used some water, which I did find out later I didn't need to use, but that's okay. I've used it here. I've added the green ink. I've then added the brown ink, and they were all very much, you know, what do I feel like adding? There was no set pattern to how much I was adding here. This was trial and error. Unfortunately, the first set was a bit more error. I did reuse it later, and you'll see I darken it up with a, another shade. I love to get my hands dirty, but this was something that I didn't quite expect. Um, I should have, but it's ink, and it did stain my hands. set of trees that I'm working here. I'm not going to be showing you the tree, but I use this Derivan Ink Pigmented Artist Ink Black and the Jacquard Piñata Color Passion Purple. And this gave me a beautiful cherry blossom foliage that I'm going to be using on a white trunked tree, kind of like a birch tree trunk with the, the purple foliage, just for something different. Right, well, lesson learnt a little. For starters, I'm gonna wear gloves for this one. 
this is how the how the green wool has turned out now the purple one is actually really quite nice and I'll, I'll show you that one later but the green one not the right color I'm really I'm not entirely happy with how that's turned out it's too light it's too it's too green it needs to have other shades in it because when we we see that viney sort of um, viney sort of leaf foliage hanging down it's not going to have that sort of plain green look it's going to be a little bit dirtier color a little bit more black and uh, blacks and browns and grays and those sort of those sorts of colors in it i have also uh, been told that i really i didn't need to add water when i'm using uh, this unfortunately i still have my mix which has water in it i'm going to keep going with that and just add some uh, add some more black to this and make that a fair bit darker and then I'm going to add some more of the green just so that the ratio of water to ink is a little bit more diluted I should have realized about the, uh, the water in there um, earlier but unfortunately that didn't happen all right let's give that a mix so i've now got my gloves i've got my tray with which to um, lay them all out on and let's go through again the foliage count up the number of branches that you have also look at the number of smaller branches that you're going to need and pull away the tufts into clumps that you're going to roll into those long willow like foliage hangings twist it into almost like a braid or this is like how wool makers uh, will wind the raw wool from the from the sheep into the strands of wool and these just they almost become like dreadlocks wind them out into various different lengths and when you're ready to attach them hot glue gun onto the model remember of course this is a 3d printed model it is made out of plastic when you put that hot glue on it it is going to heat it and melt it work quickly before it becomes pliable to attach your pieces or else you will bend those branches anytime that you come up with little stringy bits of hot glue just pull them away they they can stay there and look a bit like a vine but that's fine pull them off and just have the glue attaching the foliage to the tree work your way around add those uh, little branches all the way if you occasionally leave a branch that's fine uh, not all branches are going to have foliage on it and that will look a bit more natural now we're going to fix all of that foliage in a little bit more permanent fashion we're using a salon professional final net super hold hairspray which i'm sure many of you would realize does not belong to me but we're going to use that over all of the foliage and it will stiffen that foliage so that it doesn't just fall off after that we're using an army painter anti-shine matte varnish now this was an important point after the hairspray it's going to have a slightly glossy look with the anti-shine matte varnish you'll take away all of that shine and it will look like a much more natural looking tree well there we go have you enjoyed the video the uh the learning curve was fairly steep for me so i hope that you learned something as well if you did enjoy the video make sure that you hit like hit subscribe and leave a comment down the bottom 
and let me know some other projects that you would like to see me take on. Maybe you've done something that uh, you would like to see how uh, I how I approach the, the project. If you do have a go of any of the, the painting or terrain projects that I do and would like to uh, send me a, a picture, post it in the comment and uh, I'll, um, I'll certainly get back to you. I'd like to give a shout out to Ailish again. She is the, uh, the year 12 student who designed the tech priest that you will see at the end of the video. It was an icon that she designed for us to use for Clash of the Titans, which would have been on in April, but unfortunately we had to cancel that. I'll give you a, um, a link to her Instagram account if you'd like to go and have a look at any of her other artworks. She's a very talented young lady. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed the video on the Elven scenery from Printable Scenery, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. See you later.